Okay, folks, we're here back at it. We're going to redo the angel because I got to in a bigger hurry and um, didn't get it quite dry enough. And when I went to go wipe off the excess, pull most of the paint out of the angel. So we're going to go back in there with the fluorescent paint. Now you wouldn't believe this is fluorescent paint, but here it is. Right there. Get a little more on the toothpick. This is quite an art getting just the right amount on there so it flows right. doesn't blow too much. You gotta make sure you get enough in the halo up there. That's what I didn't do last time. I didn't quite get enough on the halo. And then when I went to try to clean it off, it was it wasn't just right. It wasn't dry enough. And uh, since there's such a big open area here, it takes a little more of the paint to fill in some of these open areas. Kind of like so. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more. And you can see it clearly. There you go little bit of reflection off of it. I think I turn it a little bit. I can't move it too much. It goes out of frame. Yeah, these big old uh, plant lights I got above me. And that's what they are. They're actual natural light plant lights that I work under. So they're actually true color also. So anything I'm doing with any kind of paint I'm getting a true color of what it's going to look like in real light. Because it does make a difference when you're working under fluorescent lights, especially with photography. Um, that's one of the, another reason why I went to the true color lights are more expensive. But the true color fluorescent lights, uh, particularly the plant lights, when you're shooting photography, you don't get that green effect that you do from other fluorescents. It's more of a natural light. The light color is not exactly like real light, but it's, it's close enough, as they say, for government work. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry. And uh, while we're doing that, we're going to come over here and kind of sort of work on the old nutcracker because he kind of needs a little help. I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do with him, finish him up, uh, whether I'm going to go all, I tried to do his teeth here, and that turned out kind of dark, I don't really like that. So, I really didn't want to have Mr. Green teeth either. So I'm thinking about making um, his mouth the actual uh, green, the gold, greenish gold anyway. Because he is a doll after all, a puppet. So. Since I already had the blue paint on there and I tried to go, I'm going to try to go up with the green and see what happens. And, uh, which is actually yellow. It's actually yellow. It says here, yellow fluorescent. I hope you can see that. 
Probably can't get it to focus now. Yellow fluorescent, it says, if you can see that. But anyway, it is. Take my word for it. Tester's yellow fluorescent. Regular old Tester's model paint. Good stuff. Use the stuff even when I was a kid on models. Had a great time. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to just go in here and fill in the old mouth here with the green, the mustache, everything under there, the green, and we're going to do the hair, the uh, bright orange. Because it's just not working out the other way. It's going to look a lot nicer. More balanced, I should say. Get everything covered here. Oops, that's almost too much. A little too much. Down in there. Notice one of his buttons over here got somehow got turned orange. I don't know how that happened. We're going to fix that right now. And some of the Christmas hair letters, when we did them, they came out. They pulled out. So again, I don't think I waited long enough to come in and let this stuff dry. I rushed myself. And, uh, and the result was... Um, didn't get things done right. So I transfer some of that over here. You can take some and transfer it from one place to another with the toothpick. It takes a little time, but if you kind of overdo one place, you can just take some of that off of there and transfer it over to the places that need it, like I'm doing right now, because I got too much over here. As you can see, Oops, whoa, almost knocked the bottle over. Trying to move this into place. Here we go. Aha, there we go. See I'm trying to transfer a little bit over here to these other places where I'm where I'm missing some. Like right over here on the end of this R on nutcracker. I mean, uh, excuse me. What did it say? Oh, multi this is a caliber multi and the eye excuse me didn't get filled in kind of quite right so we're going to take care of that right now get some of these other places that didn't quite fill in all the way Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move it down here a little bit. We're going to finish out the mustache and the nose. Get that all filled in. See if we can do this while you're watching. There we go. Kind of going off to the side here so people can see what I'm doing here. I noticed in some of my last videos while I was doing the painting, I was a big fat head or my hand was in the way. And you really couldn't see what I was doing until I pulled my hand away. But now I think you can see what we're doing. I'm just going to take in here, smooth around all the little areas with the toothpick tip. And kind of get the paint to flow. Like I said, it's kind of a delicate art of getting just the right amount on the end of your toothpick. And the other guys that did this said the same thing. It's kind of like a technique you develop. 
figuring out how much paint you need, just how much paint you need to flow into the area and fill it in just right without being too excessive. Kind of like so. Now I need to go around his eyes, fill those in. Oh, please. oh yeah, you can see his eyes. There we go. Go around here and fill in the old eyes. Eyebrows. Get those all filled in. It really helps to do this with a magnifying glass because um, you can really see what you're doing. I'm using a 10 power magnifying glass right now and um, it's working out really well. As you can see we've got the eyes done, the mustache, the teeth, Mr. Green teeth now. And I will take and I will do the hair and the hat in a continuation of the orange or the fluorescent red. It comes out orange, but it's actually fluorescent red. <clears throat> Put this back on. Always cover your paint back up when you're done. Even if you're just switching back and forth, put the cap back on stuff, or you'll just be thinning it out all the time. It's important to keep the paint pretty thin. You know, anybody who's worked with model paint knows that what comes right out of the bottle, you can't really use that. You need to thin it because it comes out a lot of times really thick. And that was one of the first things I had to learn when doing model cars was to thin the paint down so it would blow nice and smooth and you just do it in several coats and you'd get like a, an epoxy coating on the car that looked just like a uh, you know multi-layered uh, gloss finish on a, on a real production or I should say on a custom car quite an art but we're going to let that dry for a second while here and we'll come back to you Okay, we're back after that little drying spell. And we're going to clean off our little angel that we uh, repainted. And see if we waited long enough. Which I think we did. So there's the angel. Get some more pads out here. We'll get the other part clean. the nutcracker all cleaned up here we're going to do some cleaning on the places we did already because we reinforced some places put a little more stuff 
stuff in it that was missing. There we go. Fill that in. and work on the face. to redo those little shoulder epaulets there and the buttons but yeah that looks pretty good actually that's gonna look really good once I dry it off here get the excess off the excess cleaner off idea what it's going to look like. Take our black light out and put it on it. Whoa! Pretty impressive. Just under the other lights that I have on. Really shines pretty bright. There we go. Black light. Highly fluorescent. It's even a little fluorescent even on these fluorescent lights when you put a black light on it. Really fluorescent. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and finish out the, uh, the cap and the other parts of the hair and everything on it. <clears throat> Once again, we're going to get out our pink fluorescent. Get our hat lined up here. There we go. And we're going to fill all this in that we did before. And for some reason, this paint, even after I thin it out, is still very, very sticky on the lid. Almost like glue. Let's see what we got here. Start up here. See if we can get a little paint to come on there. <laughs> there. There we go. Need to come back down here and repaint this. Like I see doing these type of uh, cut 
cutouts in the metal. A little different from just doing the lettering. It takes a little more of this stuff. A little more paint, I should say. A little more of the stuff. A little more of the paint to fill in a lot of these spots. Now, see, I kind of overfill that one. It's kind of delicate. Trying to make sure you don't overfill some spot. This one is so wide to begin with, like these. It takes a lot of paint to fill them. Kind of using the toothpick as like a pencil. Guide the paint. Just something for the paint to flow off of onto the surface. and do the top of the cap here. That all fills in. See how it's going in there. Carried away. That's alright. I'll just spread that on out. Make this all flow on out. Okay, there she is. There's the the, uh, the Nutcracker puppet himself. On the lower receiver. that dry and come back and clean it.
like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, or Antifa and BLM will come to visit you. Promise.